as you can see it's quite busy here on Fireley Seafront. It's the 27th of December, day after Boxing Day. I've been here since the, well I've been here for five days. So many changes in Dad in the, just the last five days. He's gone from being able to use the commode to being totally bed bound. And he's currently in a state of delirium. He kind of slipped into a delirium on Christmas day, picked up a bit yesterday, but today, well last night, my brother-in-law my sister and I have been doing a vigil every night in shifts. I've been taking the four in the morning until wake up stay, uh, stint and since I got up at four o'clock in the morning he's been very delirious, very twitchy. It's been a bit like a game of charades really, trying to work out what his hands are saying because he's just been so active with his hands. It's like that state where you slip off into REMS, slip off into a, a nap and immediately you're in dream sleep. And he keeps doing that and then kind of waking himself up with his hand actions. But it's been like a game of charades trying to work out what, what he's dreaming about. So this is the first time I've been out since, well in four days, for a breath of fresh air. So while everything's a bit quiet at home, I thought I'd get out and just go for a walk. Tonight we've got one of the Marie Curie nurses coming in to spend the whole night. I think it's tonight all being well. And it means all the three of us that have been doing the vigil can have a bit of a break. Hopefully get a good night's sleep. It's been exhausting. We've got nurses coming in from hospice at home team and the what's called the rats or rapids team and they've been helping us turn him roll him clean him up that kind of thing Yeah, and just generally keep him clean and try to eliminate the bed sores. He has got one on his backside, which is awkward because he sleeps, his, his permanent position is in a sitting position in the bed, and so the pressure is on his backside all the time. So yeah, it's not good. I'm going to stop recording at this moment until I get somewhere quieter because the seafront is just manic. As you might imagine, it's been tumultuous and very emotional at times. Mum has just gone through lots of periods of being utterly heartbroken. We still have unopened Christmas presents. Well, they have, predominantly Dad, but. I 
can't see that they're ever going to be opened. I have fought back so many tears over the last few days just wanting to be strong for everyone I mean I, I did let go in my sister's arms I don't know I've, lo I've lost track of the days but I let go in my sister's arms a few days ago, uh, yesterday the day before I don't know not for long just enough to release the pressure And I said that thing to my dad that I said a while ago to him. While he was compass mentis, I said to him, God, this one's hard. I said to him, when you get where you're going, keep an eye out for me. Because when I get there, we'll go for a pint. Offer whatever passes as a pint. So fucking hard. His pallor hasn't totally changed yet, although it, a lot of the colour has gone from his cheeks. But it is changing. Come on, Carl. I did wonder if he was going to slip away sometime between Christmas and New Year. And it looks like that might be the case. He might have one of those little bounce backs after today, I don't know. It's so hard to tell because those little bounce backs keep happening but they're so much smaller. I don't really remember in one of the previous videos I said about the stage, is it happening? Like initially kind of one step down, one step up, or and then two steps down and one step up, the stages of deterioration. And then it becomes like three steps down and only one step up, until eventually it's just steps down. And any steps up are just, they're not even steps. It's just like a minor pullback now. And then a bigger drip, a drip, bigger dip. The outcome of what's happening is inevitable. And looking at this from everybody's perspective, it's a part of me that just wants that outcome to happen. so that he's not suffering and so that everybody can fully grieve Whew. 
managed to hold that one back. It's kind of odd, because at times, when you're dealing with the whole practicalities, and even now, as I start talking about those, I can feel this big change in my emotional state. As you start thinking about the practicalities. And then there are other times when it just feels like there's a volcano of emotion. Just bubbling away and waiting to erupt. That's probably not a bad description. <laughs> I love watching the sea. kind of reminds me of the impermanence of everything. No two waves are ever the same. No two moments are ever the same. Every one of them is precious in its own way. Even if it's destruction.